Hi, this is Almiru Westhuizen with Cape Town Emergency Medicine, and today I'm being assisted by Emmanuel Ahiable of Cape Town Emergency Medicine and the fantastic staff of the Stellenbosch University Skills Lab here at the Stellenbosch Medical Campus in Cape Town, South Africa. We're going to talk in this video about a few basic techniques that relates to spinal immobilization. Whenever you see a patient with suspected C-spine or other spinal injury, these techniques will come in very handy. The first technique we'll talk about is manual inline C-spine immobilization. The goal of manual inline spinal immobilization is to create a unit between the head and the torso, cancelling out the stabilizing function of the neck. It would be therefore incorrect to simply grasp the head and you would still be able to move relative to the torso, as it would also be to simply grasp the torso without firm control of the neck, as the same would be possible. Instead, make sure that you have a firm grasp on the clavicles or shoulders of the patient and that your palms of your hand and the distal ends of your forearms are on the bony elements of the head. This creates a single unit between the head and the torso. Your elbow should rest on your legs for stability or on the edge of the gurney or trauma trolley if that is the case. An alternative way is to have manual spinal immobilization from the top. In this case, kneel next to the patient grasp onto the firm bony parts of the body and then rest your arms on the shoulders of the patient. Be careful not to put the arms on the middle of the chest or to put too much weight on the patient as this may interfere with breathing. Firstly, this is a soft C-spine collar and should probably never be used. It should certainly never be used in the trauma context. So please stop using these in injured patients. We now have to select the correct size of C-spine collar. The correct size of the C-spine collar is where the lateral buttress of the rigid C-spine collar will reach from the clavicle to the angle of the jaw or the ear right here. This is quite clearly too small. whereas this lateral buttress is just about the right side. To apply the C-spine collar, ask an assistant to take inline C-spine immobilization from the top. While your assistant maintains good manual immobilization, use the Velcro strap or posterior buttress and pass that behind the patient's neck. Position the posterior buttress behind the patient's neck. There are many ways to proceed from here. I'm going to take over control from the top now and ask Brunman to swing the anterior buttress over the neck and face. You may have to reposition slightly to get the position right for you here. We then apply the strap. And your rigid C-spun collar is in place. Please keep in mind that this does not provide 100% immobilization of the spine and if an extra person is available, continuing manual immobilization around the rigid C-spine collar is a good idea. The next skill that we're going to show you is how to do a safe log roll of a patient and then how to place them onto a spine board. Log rolling is a multi-person technique where we aim to move the patient without interfering with spinal alignment. This can be either to check the back of the patient or, like in this case, to transfer them onto a trauma board. You need a minimum of four people to safely perform this technique. One to control the C-spine, one to control the torso, one to control the lower body, and a fourth assistant to slide in with the rigid board. You'll start by setting your position. The person at the head will have control of the procedure and will maintain manual C-spine mobilization over the C-collar as we have just described. A second person would grasp the shoulder and the hip, and a third assistant would cross arms with the first, grabbing the hip and the elbow. The person at the head would give the command to roll, and we would listen to her instructions, moving the patient gently and in a single motion. Run them whenever you're ready. Fourth assistant would now slide the board in and check the back of the patient. Once the board is tightly tucked in, the procedure is gone in reverse. Again, 
we're going to do fetch and back on the count of three. One, two, three. It's not uncommon for the patient now to be slightly off-center. You could now move the patient laterally using the similar one, two, three technique and moving the patient as a whole. Already, going to move on the count of three. One, two, three. Once the patient is correctly positioned on the spine board, consider adding head blocks for further stability of the C spine. While your assistant maintains manual inline immobilization and making sure that the horizontal and not the diagonal part of the block is adjacent to the head, ask her to relinquish one arm and place the block flush with the head with the ear in the hole. The second block the same. Two straps will help stabilize your patient. The chin strap should be placed over the chin buttons of the C-spot collar. And tighten comfortably as shown. Forehead strap should be placed across the forehead of the patient and tighten this shot. The patient is now basically immobilized on the board. The next step would be to apply a spider harness or harness control device. We'll discuss this in a separate video. And that's it. Basic spinal immobilization pertaining to trauma patients.